the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is risen. Al Messiah come. Christ is risen. It's a joy to hear people respond when we, the priests, cry that out. I know we have about maybe 60, 70 people today, but I know there's still many people that we're speaking to from their homes, inside their homes, watching on their computers. So we're here, and you're there, and we're all one family in the Lord. These are the first days that the church has been open in a long time. And for about two months, we have felt paralyzed. We felt stuck. We felt as if there's no hope. I've been in this house and I can't go anywhere. I desire to see my family and I'm not supposed to leave. I'm stuck. But we've only been dealing with it for a few months. The man we hear about in the gospel dealt with it for 38 years. He couldn't even walk around in his home. He couldn't go outside for a walk. We feel clustered and sometimes even claustrophobic in our homes. But this man was stuck to his dead body. We hear in the Vesper services as if it was a corpse that still had breath, just waiting for burial. And I'm sure there's many of us that wish there were a big pool, just like the pool of Bethesda, that we're taught an angel went and rippled the waters. And because of that rippling, it had special power. And the first one to step in would be healed from those diseases by that power. And I'm sure many of us wish there were a big pool that we could just throw our world into so that it could be healed, so we could get back to our life as we know it. But we have to ask ourselves the question, life as we knew it, was it pleasing to God? Was the life that we were living before the pandemic, was it pleasing to God? The answer may be yes. And if it is, keep doing what you're doing. But for many, we realize how much we don't need, how much of the world we thought we needed. And then we realize even when we're in our homes, even when we can't come to 5311 Mercer Street, our good God dwells inside of us. Our good God can dwell inside of our homes. God is not limited to one physical location. You see, the healing that the Jews received was one little pool. And it only happened one time whenever the angel came to touch the waters. But we don't have one location. We don't have one time throughout the year. We have a God who chose to take on flesh, who chose to take all our infirmities and become human. The man that wanted to be healed today said, I have no man. I have no man to raise me up and to drop me into the pool. We, you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, you have a man. You have a God-man. You have God who chose to become human and take on flesh. And he doesn't say, I'll be here just one day out of the year, and only one of you will be healed. He says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. We've all got our mouths covered. Those that aren't here are cooped up inside their homes. And we may think, how can we have abundant life when we're so limited right now? But flip it around. Think how free we are. 
from all the constraints, all the busyness. And now we have time to focus on that which is important. Our families, our own salvation. There'll be a time it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. The busyness is going to come back. I don't know when. A year, three years, three months. And we're going to say, I wish I had the time I had when we were quarantined. Sounds funny now. But we're going to wish for this peace. Our God provides eternal healing. Does he push a button and say, get out of the world virus? He could, but he allows things to persist. But the one thing that he did take care of was death. Not everyone's going to get COVID-19, but everyone will die. Everyone will come into contact with death. And that one, that one ailment, that crippled humanity, not for 38 years, but from the inception of the world, when Adam and Eve sinned, that ailment Christ did away with. He's not just one little body of water in one location. He is the living water. And we come to church to receive his body and his blood. But even in our homes, we open up the word, we open up the scripture, and hear what he commands us to do, to live in peace with our brothers and sisters, to forgive those who have offended us, to ask forgiveness if we have offended someone. Our God is a good God. He's the God-man. So you have a man. You're not like the one by the side of the road, waiting. You have a God-man who says, let me lift you up, my child, and not put you in a water in Bethesda, but let me put you in my kingdom. Let me write your name on my heart. He's given us his blood. He's given us his everything so that we can be united to him. May we hear the words of Christ. Rise up. Take up your pallet and walk. Whatever infirmity it may be, Whatever sin attacks us, God desires to raise us up. But he also commands us, once we've been risen, to walk in his ways. May that good God, may that good God fill your homes, fill your lives with his joy and with his peace. To him be glory forever and ever. To all of our mothers, blessed Mother's Days, welcome back home to your mother, the church. God bless you always.